my dear friends, I welcome you to our midnight soiree. And we come to this place, not out of curiosity, but we come as spiritual souls on a journey, a journey of self-discovery, of finding out who are we and why are we here? What's our life purpose? We get so bogged down, even I get bogged down in my nushai of keeping a small little monastery, but it's a busy little monastery with phone calls and emails and people knocking on the door wanting help and people in the village in need of help but too afraid to ask for help. So let us come. Let us come as we are, as a child of God, as a beloved, someone who is worthy. Yes, we are worthy of this and more besides. So come, my dear friends, come as you are, for you are a child of God. So let us begin by lighting a candle for peace. And though my screen has frozen, I trust in my heart that you can still see me and hear the simple message. A simple light professing one's faith in a loving God, not a God of vengeance, of agendas, control and fear, but a God of love who invites you to take place and to be still in the presence of love. But are you wanting to face your greatest fear? Are you wanting to bury your ghosts before a new year dawns? Or are you wanting to stay as you are? Be still now and come into the presence of love. But first, I would like to read to you, if I may, <clears throat> from Isaiah, one of my favorite prophets in the Old Testament Bible. And it reads, The desert will rejoice, and flowers will bloom in the wilderness. The desert will sing and shout for joy. It will be as beautiful as the Lebanon mountains, and as fertile as the fields of Carmel and Sharon. Everyone will see the Lord's splendor, see his greatness and his power. Give strength to the hands that are tired and to the knees that tremble in weary, with weakness. Tell everyone who is discouraged, be strong and don't be afraid. God is coming to your rescue, coming to punish your enemies. What are those words saying to your heart as we say farewell to an old year, a year that has caused disquiet, unhappiness, even poverty for many of God's children? Do we begin a new year with festered wounds, with deep-rooted fears and anxieties? Do we run away because we are in denial? Do we hear the voice of Spirit speak? 
speak to our hearts and set us free from egoism, selfishness, self-adulation, Or do we surrender in a loving trust to the one who is? Recently at a gathering here, one of our community, Mary, presented me with, a, with two beautiful books. One is a book, Food for the Soul by Brian Darcy, a Catholic priest, an amazing man who stood against the odds by honouring his heart and his truth. And though still a priest, he experienced the wrath of the Congregation of Faith for daring, for daring to challenge his church. He didn't say anything out of ordinary. He spoke his truth, that the church had become so powerful, corrupt, that it was alienating the little people, the ordinary people, that Christ came to save, to support, to love. Let me read the back of this. The people of God are going through a tough time. And I want you now to reflect in your heart. I want you to come as you are and just be still. Be still right now. Be still and just allow the Spirit of God to speak to you. For the Spirit of God speaks to us in the little things, in the ordinary things. What is he saying to your heart now? What are you hearing in your heart? I suggest you invite, you invoke and you ask the Spirit of God in the presence of Gaia, in the presence of Mother Earth, in the presence of all that is and come as you are a beloved of God. Come as you are where there is no fear, but many are afraid. Many are living in fear. Many are afraid to be who they truly are, a child of God. Are you a child of God that is living in fear? Well, let's be still now and let us reclaim our divinity and break the cycle of fear, for fear is not of God. Fear is a weapon of the evil one to lead you away from your heart, from a loving relationship with your God. And as Brian Darcy says, this amazing Catholic priest, a man of God, the people of God are going through a tough time. Many of the institutions they came to rely on in the church, in society and in the economy have let them down and come up short on answers. Yet through it all, people still hunger for the truth and for meaning in their lives. Are you afraid to be who you truly are? Are you afraid to take responsibility for your faith journey? Are you afraid to let people see you as God sees you? Are you embarrassed, ashamed, unhappy, living an unlived life? Well, if you are, you can do something about it. 
you can talk it over with God. You can explain who you are. Because if you've been created in the image and likeness of the Supreme, then why should you allow fear destroy that loving relationship? Come back to your heart. Try not to begin a new year reliving the old tragedies, the dramas, the pain and the hurt. There's a time for everything. There's a season for planting. And now is that season to plant seeds of hope and to listen what is God saying to you, not what your ego is telling you. That's why so many people are deeply unhappy and disturbed because they've lost their inner peace. Many who are what I would call religious fundamentalists hide behind their fear and use religion as a weapon to throttle the children of God who do not share their belief or doctrine. But every child of God, regardless of their color, their gender orientation, their disability, their belief, they are our brothers and sisters. And we are not called to sit in judgment, but to do what Christ did, to embrace the marginalized in our midst. So come, come as you are, a beloved of God. This is what Brian says in the introduction of his book. Plato believed that knowledge is food for the soul, while Jesus said human beings do not live on bread alone. I don't disagree with either of them, but from my own lived experience, I can testify that anguish, rejection and the pain of abandonment will destroy your soul. I think I may have survived this dark night by the skin of my teeth. Food for the soul is a series of random chapters, charts, the spiritual path, which helped me through the most devastating faith crisis of my life. For in 2010, I was formally censured by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. The then head of that congregation wrote to his superior general of the Passionists, the religious order of which Brian is a member that my writings and broadcasts had been a source of great scandal to the faithful. How tragic! And how underneath of those who still insist on sticking to outdated dogmas that are more about fear than love. But he says this, and who was my faceless friend? I don't know. But I think it was probably God directing me in a different way. Telling me that structures aren't important. Telling me that he is in charge if I will only listen. Telling me too that all the writings will end up in a little preaching the passion isn't about looking, sorry, the writing will end up in a little ball in a waste paper basket. I do apologize. And most of all telling me that preaching the passion isn't about looking at a dead figure on a wooden crucifix. It's about dealing with people, listening to them, walking with them. It's about letting God be God. It's about answering his call. Is that where you are? 
in your journey of faith. Sadly, there are a lot of what I call spiritual food junkies who buy into all the latest courses, all the latest theories in order to appease their own inner disquiet. And I share that based on nearly 30 years, 40 years of pastoral spiritual living. And latterly, as 12 years living the monastic life, of which seven have been as a contemplative. So I'm not speaking from a textbook. I'm speaking from my heart. And I've had the privilege of meeting wonderful people come here who were really my teacher. They came seeking my help. But in the end, they became an amazing teacher and taught me so much. One in particular who phoned me today for about an hour and shared her story she knew that she was being guided to do the course entering the castle a pathway to your soul to your god it's not about religion it's not about converting to a catholic way of life it's about allowing your soul your castle embrace your god face your demons and reptiles bless them let them go. It gives you tools to reclaim your divinity as a child of God, not of religion, of spirituality. Jesus preached spirituality, not religion. He condemned religion because the Jewish faith was more focused on ritual and shackling the ordinary child of God with so much guilt and fear, as has happened from the day the Christian church was founded. Many have misinterpreted the message of Christ. Jesus was about love. So why today are so many beautiful Catholic Christians so locked in a mindset of fear guilt, superstition. It takes a person of real courage to step out of that mindset and find the Jesus in the Gospel, the Jesus, the barefoot Galilean, as G.K. Chesterton once said when he visited the Vatican, where amidst this pomp and splendor do I find the barefoot Galilean. Where is he? He found prelates, religious, clerics, more focused on high office, deviousness, underneathness, double standards. So I'm not shocked because I'm human myself. And it takes a person of real courage and integrity today to speak their truth, to honor their heart. And the beautiful person who was a client, it's now a friend, is seriously now considering taking the plunge and listening to the Christ speak to her heart to become a tertiary oblate and do entering the castle on a one-to-one -one with me beginning in January. She's known for months, but dismissed it, and her life became anxious and fearful again. And we've been friends for about six years now, where I first had the privilege of meeting this person who was very badly wounded, scarred by another inhumanity to them. And it took several years of sensitive listening and compassion 
to empower this beautiful soul, take back their power and reclaim their divinity and walk free from years of guilt, suicidal ideation and be free and listen to their heart. And interestingly, when God speaks to us, sometimes we're not believing what we're hearing. Why would he speak to me like that? Why would he invite me? I'm a no-hoper. People don't like me because I don't like myself. I'm classed as a bore. I have no personality, so people say. And then people tell me, I don't know whether I'm Arthur or Martha. I'm screwed up in my sexuality, they say. So why would God love someone who doesn't know what they are or who they are? But they've got it wrong. The Christ came to touch lives. Is he touching yours? Is he speaking to your heart to relinquish what you think you should do? and become more focused on what the Divine is inviting you to do. Don't welcome a new year, a new beginning, a new dawn of celebration and spiritual reawakening by bringing in the baggage of this year. At midnight every New Year's Eve, Oh, for about 30 years now, I've always stood in the garden and on a clear night, hopefully, watched the stars and dance the canticle to Brother Sun and Sister Moon and then kneel down on the earth with a lighted candle and offer my life to God for peace and pray for all mankind all God's children, because they are my brother and sister. Are you willing, at the stroke of midnight, to kneel in your garden and surrender your heart to the divine? Are you willing to take responsibility for your life, your unhappiness, and why you're so afraid and fearful unhappy, miserable, hankering for a relationship that you know you're not ready to commit to because there are demons at bay in your life that need to be healed, to be released, to be let go of. My prayer this year is for all my brothers and sisters past and present of the Teo community and Heart to Soul Prayer Partners for Peace, for the many friends of our community and our enemies, those who try to discredit us, especially me, for being an evil person, for being a fraudster. But I bless them and I forgive them. Because when you surrender your heart to God, you automatically attract negative forces. But we're not afraid, because in the blood of Christ, we protect ourselves. In the name of the cosmic Christ, we bless ourselves. And we stay centered and grounded in our interior castle, our soul. And as I grow older now, I realize that it's important to be honest it's important to be true to thine own heart. And it's important to seek spiritual help. If you're on the cusp, not knowing whether to be pushed, to be shoved, or to be locked in that mindset of I couldn't care less. If you're struggling with your sexuality and you're afraid to come clean and tell others who you really are. You owe it to yourself to be honest before God, who doesn't condemn you. As Pope Francis said, 
when challenged by a fundamentalist? And what about homosexuals? Shouldn't you condemn them? He said, who am I to condemn anyone? Only God can judge. We mustn't judge others. We must demonstrate the love of God to the alcoholic, the drug addict, the criminal, the prisoner, the prostitute, the pedophile, the lesbian or gay or bisexual or transgendered. We are not here in service to God to sit on our throne and pontificate. Forgive me if ever I have done that to you. I'm in service, but at times when I'm low in mood because of my illness, sometimes the evil forces seek to make me fall back and give up, give in and wallow in self-pity. But thank God for your support and your love. I am able to face my greatest fear. The desert will rejoice that's your soul. And flowers will bloom in the wilderness. That's the fruits of your labors having surrendered to God. The desert will sing and shout for joy. It will be as beautiful as the Lebanon mountains and as fertile as the fields of Carmel and Sharon. Everyone will see the Lord's splendor see his greatness and his power in your life the moment you surrender yourself to your father mother god who made you in love out of love for love be at peace in your heart be at peace in your life this new day is the first day of the rest of your life. Embrace it, embrace it. And if anything is lurking in the shadows, haunting you, trying to separate you from loving your God, name it, I dare you. Bless it, I challenge you. Release it, go for it, give it to God. For he said, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened. And this is the one who calls you to agape, to agape, to love. This is the good shepherd of your soul, the cosmic Christ. He's calling you. He's beckoning you, come, surrender. Tell everyone who is discouraged not to be afraid. Be strong, reclaim your divinity, for you are a beautiful and amazing child of God. Don't become a spiritual food junkie who has to impress their friends in their spiritual circles that they've been to this webinar, seminar, course. Don't buy into another's theory. You are you and no one has the right to walk in your shoes. No one, no one but you. But are you willing to take the bull by the horns and face your greatest fear and reclaim it by releasing all those old vows and we're doing that on New Year's Eve tomorrow in the presence of the cosmic Christ the avatar of this age forget your mobiles your texting, your iPads and iPhones. Come back to the one who loves you, 
the one who paid the price for you. And it doesn't give a Castlemaine X what people think of you. You are a beloved of God. Believe it. Say it. Don't look in the mirror and say, oh, I must have some Botox. Oh, my eye bags are showing. Oh, my ears are too big. Oh, I must have breast implants. Oh, I must have my figure reduced by three sizes. That's pure ego. God created you as a child of love. And if there's anything in you that you dislike, then you have a duty of care to yourself, to your soul. Physician, heal thyself and avoid entering a new year, a gift from God, and destroy it by blocking your abundance. Come.